situational awareness. Let's talk about that. Let's get cracking. Good photo morning. Welcome to Crackett's Garage. I'm your host, Eric. Today we're going to talk about situational awareness. 99% of the time I travel by myself and I travel very long distances and when I need to make a pit stop, a restroom break, or get some gasoline, you never know where you're going to pull off. And when you pull off on an exit or and head to the nearest gas station, heavens knows many of them have been pretty sketchy. And what I mean by that is just not a really good element around the gas station. So invariably, I watch people and they have their smartphones out the minute they hop out of their car or, or get off their bike and they're touching base, checking messages uh, with their spouse, whatever. Folks, keep your radar, keep your spider sense going all the time. Pay attention to your surrounding environment. And why I share this, it's only happened to me one time, but I was in Alabama and I was taking a scooter trip for a friend that had uh, got hit on his uh, Bergman 200 and uh, I've talked about him on the channel previously Mike and his bike was totaled he had a long rehab a very long rehab to recoup from that and I uh, I'm kind of thrifty when it comes to spending money, so I was keeping my eyes out for a replacement for his scooter. And I found one in Texas for dirt cheap, comparatively speaking. And uh, we texted back and forth. He said, yes, I would like to buy it. I'm not ready to ride yet, but I'm close. And I would like to own that bike, but I'm in no position to go pick it up. And meaning I don't think I can take the drive out there for a uh, tow in a trailer or a fly and ride or something like that way to get it home. Well here in Virginia it was March. Winter was lingering on, still had snow on the ground and I'm like dag with it. I cashed in some frequent flyer miles, bought a plane ticket and went out to I think it was Austin, Texas. And where Michael lives is down almost to mile marker zero in Key West, Florida. And he prepaid for it. I just flew out there. And I took an Uber from the airport to the dealership. We uh, had aligned everything beautifully. And the minute I got there and got on the bike, of course it started raining. Just my luck. It's the way things happen. And uh, I rode that scooter all the way from... Austin, Texas, across Louisiana, Alabama, down into Florida, and all the way down to the bottom end of Florida, to Key West. When I stopped in Alabama for gas, I was the only person in the gas station. It looked like the storefront was closed, and there was another gentleman, kind of scraggly looking, on the other side of the uh, gas station so my spidey sense is kind of tingling and I'm watching as this unfolds and he starts approaching me and I'm keeping uh, my peripheral vision on him and uh, sure enough he comes up and approaches me while I'm pumping gas or trying to and he says hey man do you have a couple of bucks I could you can spare and I said I sure don't sorry I can't help you keeping an eye on him the whole time uh, he pulls out a knife on me how about six inch knife not very big and he says well in that case I'll take the whole wallet so here we are I'm in a situation I'm by myself no one else is around and I have to fight or flight now flight that's a, a coin term to get the hell out of there if you can or stand your ground and fight I'm not one to start hooking and fighting I'm just not a fighter it's not who I am but I'll do what I have to do so I thought briefly, and I'm, I'm very quick-witted when, when I'm under duress. So I started to reach my wallet, and pulled it out, and I made sure I dropped it as I was trying to hand it to him. And he looked down, and I immediately, I was still wearing my helmet, I immediately uh, head-buttered him, 
bunk with the helmet. Down he went, uh, the cra crash of the helmet hit him right in the nose. Down he went in a heap, down on the ground. I have to say, folks, this is not my finest moment. But uh, he starts leaking from the place, he's bleeding. I take the knife, I put it up against the curb where the gas pumps are, and I stomp on it to break on it, to break it in half. Hop on the scooter and get the hell out of there. I'm shaking like a leaf, the adrenaline is flowing through my veins. I figured if I stuck around and called the police, it would be his word against mine and he would say I attacked him and there I am completely jammed up. I'm not dealing with that. So what I did was kind of calm down. It took me, like I said, about 20 minutes to settle down. My heart is going 100 miles an hour. I found another gas station and got back on the interstate. And I kind of, when I think back on this situation, of course I don't want to put anybody in harm's way, but I stood my ground, I did what I had to do, and I'm not proud of it. I'm not saying it's right, wrong, or indifferent, but I'm thankful that I had my spidey sense going enough to recognize the situation or it could have gone a, gone a whole lot worse. I serve this up to you guys as a public service announcement. When you pull over for gas or make a pit stop or whatever, there's sometimes some undesirables lingering about looking to profit from unweary travelers as you pull up is the best way I can put it. Keep your radar going. If it looks bad, get the hell out of there and move on to the next one. Don't chance it. Keep your radar going. Consider this a public service announcement. Just something to think about. I hope this travel tip helps you from Kraken's Garage. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. If you want to see more in the future, hit that subscribe button right down there in the corner. And remember, folks, go riding. It's good for you, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.